Good, good morning. Welcome to church this morning. It's uh, good to see people here uh, on a, what, I keep saying cool mornings, but I, I'm, it's brisk, brisk's a good word, good, brisk is good, it makes you feel that you're alive, but the days are warming up, aren't they? You can, you can see that, uh, and as it was reminded to me this morning, um, you know that the seasons are changing because the, uh, we're all getting the, the effects of the echo going through. Um, so there are some people who are away today with some illness and the like. So um, if you're at home watching because you, you, you can't get along this morning, welcome to church as well for those who are at home. Our pastor Rob, as we mentioned last week, is, is in Adelaide for a, a family funeral, so I'll be leading the service this morning. I will start the service this morning in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Our first hymn for this morning is, um, oh, I, I might have forgotten to change the order. Which one have you got? Have you got Lord Speak to Me there, Karen? Okay, Lord Speak to Me. I'll apologise for that. I've given Karen the, 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 the hymn numbers in the wrong order. So, so we'll, I'll, I'll take the blame for that one while we just wait for Karen to change to the next hymn.
has come together in the time of conflict. Dear friends in Christ, let us draw near to God our Father with a true heart to confess our sins and to ask him in the name of our Lord Jesus Christ to forgive us. Our help is in the name of the Lord. I said, I will confess my sins to the Lord. Almighty God, our Maker and Redeemer, we confess to you that by nature we are sinful and unclean, and that we have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed. Therefore, we flee for refuge to your infinite mercy and plead for your grace for the sake of our Lord Jesus Christ. Most merciful God, you have given your only Son to die for us. Have mercy on us, and for his sake grant us forgiveness of all our sins. By your Holy Spirit, increase our knowledge of you and your will, and make us obedient to your word, so that by your grace, we may come to eternal life through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, has had mercy on us and he has given his only Son to die for us. And for his sake, he forgives us all of our sins. To those who believe in his name, he has given the right to become children of God and has given them his Holy Spirit. Whoever believes and is baptised will be saved. Grant this, Lord, to us all. Amen. You have come to the city of the living God and to innumerable angels in festal gathering and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven. in the heart. Almighty and eternal God, grant that we may grow in faith, hope and love and make us love what you command so that we may obtain what you promise through your Son who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever.
Please remain seated uh, for the Bible readings this morning. Yes, it should be right. The green microphone, Ashley. The first reading comes from Jeremiah chapter 1, verses 4 to 10. The call of Jeremiah. The word of the Lord came to me, saying, before I formed you in the womb, I knew you before you were born. I set you apart. I appointed you as a prophet to the nations. Alas, sovereign Lord, I said, I do not know how to speak. I am too young. But the Lord said to me, do not say, I am too young. You must go to everyone I send you to and say whatever I command you. Do not be afraid of them, for I am with you, and you will, and will rescue you, declares the Lord. Then the Lord reached out his hand and touched my mouth and said to me, I have put my words in your mouth. See, today I appoint you over nations and kingdoms to uproot and tear down, to destroy and overthrow, to build and to plant. This is the word of the Lord. second reading comes from Hebrews chapter 12 verses 18 to 29. You have not come to a mountain that can be touched and that is burning with fire, to darkness, gloom and storm, to a trumpet blast or to such a voice speaking words that those who heard it begged that no further word would be spoken to them. Because they could not bear what was commanded, even if even an animal touches the mountain, it must be stoned to death. The sight was so terrifying that Moses said, I am trembling with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion, to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem. You have come to thousands upon thousands of angels in joyful assembly, to the church of the firstborn, whose names are written in heaven. You have come to God, the judge of all, to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that bears a better word than the blood of Abel. See to it that you do not refuse him who speaks. If they do not escape when they refuse him who warned them on earth, how much less will we, if we turn away from him who warns us from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised, once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heavens. The words once more indicate the removing of what can be shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us be thankful and so worship God acceptably with reverence and awe, for our God is a consuming fire. This is the word of the Lord. <laughs> teaching in one of the synagogues and a woman was there who had been crippled by a spirit for 18 years. She was bent over and could not straighten up at all. When Jesus saw her, he called her forward and said to her, woman, you are set free from your infirmity. Then he put his hands on her and immediately she straightened up and praised God. Indignant because Jesus had healed on the Sabbath, the synagogue leader said to the people, There are six days for work, so come and be healed on those days, not on the Sabbath. The Lord answered him, You hypocrites, 
Doesn't each of you on the Sabbath you untie your ox or donkey from the stall and lead it out to give it water? Then should not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan has kept bound for 80 long years, be set free on the Sabbath day from that what bound her? When he said this, all his opponents were humiliated, but the people were delighted with all the wonderful things he was doing. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Let us join together in the words of the Apostles' Creed and, de and declare our faith. I believe in God, the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, dead, and buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God, the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Okay, Karen, here we go. Hymn number 227, O Spirit of the Living God. The message for this morning comes from the Gospel reading in, in Luke, where we have the healing of a woman who'd been crippled such that she was bent over for 18 years. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, be with us as we study your word and the message of freedom that it brings to each and every one of us. We pray in Jesus' name. Amen. This week, uh, the, um, we've been having an art show over in the church hall and after here everybody will be encouraged to come out and join with us as we go and have a look at some of the artworks over there. This is a, a, an activity of the Lutheran Church right across Australia and New Zealand where we have um, artists working uh, to provide artworks and art displays in churches across Australia 
that are looking at the, the theme free indeed. And in the gospel reading, you might uh, remember that there was uh, um, Jesus calls out to the lady, telling her that he's making, setting her free. So as part of that, uh, we've been looking at, uh, as part of that, the theme of the, the art shows has been free indeed. And that theme comes out in the gospel reading for today. So we're going to start, first of all, by looking, I want to just share with you some of the artworks that are over in the church hall so that you can see how others might see the theme of freedom. So Ashley, if we go to the, the so this one here is an artwork by the year ones. And when they think of freedom, this is a, an artwork called um, messiness or mess making. I think they've captured the essence of what freedom is for a young child, don't you think? It's just, you know what, forget the rules and all of that. I'm just going to make mess. And they do that and they, they enjoy it and it just releases them. So for them, mess making is, is part of freedom. There's an, a similar one here, which is um, the next, next slide there, Ashley. This one here is spinning. If you've ever seen a child spinning and weaving and just, just enjoying themselves, when they're free, they just have colour. And look, if you look at that, there's colour, there's light, there's freedom in that. And so what children see, and I think they've captured it so well, is light. So when there's freedom, there's light and your ability to move in the light. The next one, Ashley. So this is here. This one here is called playing in the sun. So for young children, again, the idea is light. It's warmth. It's being outside, not contained inside, but free to be outside playing in the sun. It's this freedom. This is what children see, and this is deep, and this is really, really good. And then, Ashley, the, the final, the, the next one there, this artwork is talking about spending time with loved ones. For them to be free, they're not on their own, they're not kept away and isolated, they're free, they can spend time with loved ones. Isn't it amazing how freedom, even just for young children, there are these amazing aspects to freedom. And this is what the children have expressed in their art. And I'll, I'll let you go and see all of the other artworks, but there was one more that I wanted to, to show people here. And that, the next one is an artwork from Anne Finney. This is a painting that pictures what somebody in a dark place, in a dark cave, deep in a cave where it's cold and dark, not the warmth, light areas that the children were talking about, but it's somebody in a cold, dark place. But at the end of that cave, there's an opening and they can see that light, they can see that warmth outside and they can see where to go to get freedom. And it calls this picture hope. Isn't that an a deep and amazing theme for an artwork where Annette is expressing when you're in a dark place and you can see where there's a freedom, there is hope. I think these, these artworks are fantastic. Actually, we can go back to camera now. So after the service, I encourage you to come and have a look at some of the artworks that are in the, the display in the church. When we think of the gospel reading today, and we think of this lady who's burdened and bent over for 18 years, crippled by in her spirit or by her spirit. There's another artwork by um, Robert Hodgell. Robert Hodgell was an American artist. He had a what is called a woodcut print. So you get a, a sheet of timber and you carve into it the painting that, or the artwork that you want. Then you cover it with ink and you use it as, as like a printing press. He has an artwork called Pilgrim's Progress. And it shows a, a man. A man, just like the lady in the Gospel reading. He is bent over. He is just almost breaking under the weight of a bag of rocks on his back. 
You've got this person, his face is grotesque in the pain that he's got from having this huge weight on his shoulders so that he's bent over and he cannot look up. He's just almost breaking under this weight. He has two arms, of course. One is holding onto this sack. And his, his arm is just grasping really hard onto this to hold this weight on his shoulders, to carry this weight that is just so heavy he's almost breaking. In the other hand, he has a book, which we would be interpreting as being scriptures. He's bent over with one hand holding the book, the other one holding this weight onto his shoulders, Then there's the words next to him. What must I do to be saved? You can see this man buckling under this weight, looking for answers in scripture. But there are two things that really call out and explain what his problem is. One is that he's holding on to this weight. He is spending all of his his effort with one hand to hold on to it, with the other one looking in the scriptures, but for hope, but saying, what must I do? to be saved. He's not going to find his answer in what he can do to be saved. Salvation is not his. It doesn't lie with him. It lies hope in Christ. You can see the problem. You can see as Lutherans, we know that we're not saved by anything we can do, but what Christ can do. If we go forward to the, the Bible reading, we've got, we see this lady 18 years buckled over so that she cannot look anybody in the eye. She can barely see where she's going because she's buckled over. She's wandering but cannot see where she's going. She goes to the synagogue, possibly because she's heard that Jesus will be there. But because she's buckled over, she wouldn't be able to see him. Hope in Christ. Hope in that salvation that's in Christ may be there, but she wouldn't be able to see him. But salvation comes to her anyway. Why? It's explained very clearly in that reading that as she is healed at every step, it's Christ that makes the motion and does, moves towards her. First of all, the scripture says, that it was Christ that saw her. While she could only look at the ground in front of her because of her disability, what was important was that Christ saw her. And even though she didn't know that he was there, he calls to her. He offers salvation. He calls to her and I say, it says, you will be free. He announces that she will be set free. He goes to her. He closes that distance, that separation, because she's the person with the disability. He goes to her. Then, again, because of her, her disability and just the fact that she's unable to save herself, he touches her and she is healed. All through that story of salvation, it is Christ that does everything. Except then at the end, when she's healed, she stands up straight. She has strength. She can see again. She can make eye contact with him finally. And she praises God. Her only actions there, one was to make herself available by going to the synagogue. But then finally, just to praise God. To respond to the healing that had been given to her by giving of herself in praise to the God that has saved her. This story here, if you think of it, is very, very deep and speaks of us in our lives. If you, and it, if you look at the, the similarity or the, the, with the, the artworks that we've talked about, we struggle along in our darkness, but it is God who saves. If you think through 
in our society. I know there are many people who are in dark places, just as in the artworks, in the caves, who desperately want to see that freedom that the children are talking about. They want to see warmth, light. They don't want to be isolated anymore. They want to be able to spend time with people. They want to be out and able to move. But they're in a dark place, they're in a cold place. But even in those situations, God continues to save. I've seen people who have struggled with mental illness. People, a friend who came, I've seen a friend come to me in a very dark place with voices confusing him in ways that he would be led to either hurt himself or others. And I've seen him work through that to the point of, as the lady praising God, this person gets through it, is praises God, and then turns and, and gives his life in study of the scriptures. And when I meet him now, I don't talk to somebody who's confused. We talk about the wonder, of, we talk theology and the wonder of saving grace of God. I've seen people who've struggled with addiction, who have seen their lives just changed in an instant where that substance had no power over them instantaneously and they just give thanks to God still today that they've never gone back. I've seen people in very dark places that their marriages have fallen apart. But then as a church, we've rejoiced in celebrations when their marriage is restored and we have another wedding. I've seen people go from dark places into the light and praise God. And that continues, and that same offer is there for everybody today. Let us pray. Heavenly Father, we, we thank you that you are the God that saves. For those of us who are struggling, for those of us who are in a dark place now, whether it's a problem with, with our mental well-being, whether it's a physical ailment, whether it's a problem with some sort of addiction or darkness in our life, those things that we would desperately love to get rid of, but that we hold on to as a weight, not knowing how we can be saved. Heavenly Father, in your word, there's a promise that you still see us and that you call out to us and that you will announce freedom to those who are enslaved. Lord, please, we pray that your spirit will move and help to provide salvation and that freedom so that for those here who are suffering or those online who would love to see release from those things uh, that have been troubling them for so many years. Heavenly Father, the same story of that lady in the synagogue can be seen again in the lives of your people here. We pray this in Jesus' name. God is the God who does save and who brings freedom. So I do suggest that seek that through Christ. There's nothing you can do to save yourself, but freedom is clearly offered through Christ. We, we have another, another hymn, I think, during the next hymn, hymn number 159, um, we'll be taking up an offering, a free will offering of the work, for the work of the church. Thank you.
Let us speak the prayers that are on our hearts and minds. Almighty God, Heavenly Father, we give you thanks for all your blessings of body and soul. Above all, we thank you for preserving your holy church, the gospel and the sacraments. We thank you for the leaders of our church, our pastors, lay workers and teachers. May their lives provide an example of holy living for all Christians. Lord, in your mercy. We give you thanks for our state leaders, our Premier and our Parliament, that through them you provide stable government for our society. Fill them with truthfulness, justice and wisdom. Lord, in your mercy. We bring before you the needs of those who suffer misfortune, for strangers and refugees in our land, for the poor, for those who are physically or mentally disabled, for those who are in prison, and for those who are suffering for their faith. Comfort them in their need and give us willing hearts and hands to help them where we can. Lord, in your mercy, Lord, we bring before you the work of prison chaplaincy, that those who are serving sentences know that those who look to you will never be put to shame. And we pray for the victims of crime, that they will be granted justice, and that you will give them the strength they need to re-establish a normal life. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, we pray for the institution of marriage in our land, that it may be honoured by all and upheld by the law. Help families to spend time with each other and grow closer. Bring, peace, bring your peace to families in conflict and help them to forgive whatever has hurt them in the past. Lord, in your mercy. Lord, have mercy on all who are driven by greed and a love of money. Help our society overcome the God of materialism and to look to you as the source of all good. Lord, in your mercy. Since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, we give thanks to you, our God, and we offer you our worship with reverence and awe. In the name of Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. Let us join together in the words of the Lord's Prayer. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come. Your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours. Amen. Before we, before we fi finish our, our final hymn, God does offer freedom, and if people are struggling with things in their lives, take your time, seek him, and let him take that burden from you so that you may be saved. This week. If you'd like to speak to somebody about that, uh, you can come and have a chat to me uh, after the service. Otherwise, you know, we, we can uh, we'll contact Pastor, who will be back later this week, so that we can talk to you and help you to take that weight off of your, your shoulders. Actually, do we have, have a blessing there as well? We might pray a blessing before we have our final hymn. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine on each and every one of you and be gracious to you. May the Lord look upon you with favour and give you his peace and give you that freedom that is promised in, in the gospel. Amen. 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 Our final, our final hymn is, And Can It Be? And there's a wonderful verse in there that talks about my chains falling off and my heart is free. Let us sing about that freedom again in this great hymn.
Here we go. Just a few, few quick announcements uh, this morning. Actually, what have we got up there currently in the announcements? Um, okay, can you click on one of the later slides in that series, uh, in, within the queue? Okay. Okay, the wi Women Renewed is um, coming up. That's next Saturday, the 27th, 2 p.m. in the church hall. So, ladies, the Mayor Tanya Milligan will be um, attending that. So, if, talk to Vanessa or Joy. Joy will be late. Oh, actually, Joy will be away. Talk to Vanessa uh, if you'd like to be involved in that. What have we got then, Ashley? Okay, so we're still having troubles with this queue. And, uh, I had some more pictures of the openings of the school um, the sports shed. Uh, we might try that again next week. We'll try again. We have an ongoing problem with the, that. Uh, Michael. Thank you, Neil. Good morning, everyone. Uh, three or four things. First of all, the first one most of you will know, uh, but for the few members of the congregation who haven't caught up with the news, Ray Ferdinand died last Monday morning and was buried in Gatton Cemetery on Thursday afternoon. The Ferdinand family, as the older members of the congregation, no, I'll change that, as the longer serving members of the congregation, will know the Ferdinand family was, uh, was quite a big part of this congregation uh, for many, many years. And in fact, Ray's sister Dawn is still, uh, still a member here and comes to church here. Uh, so for that family, we express our condolences. I should also add that Ray um, was, I understand, and again, someone with a better memory than mine will correct me on this, Jeff. Ray uh, was heavily involved in the setting up of Anua back in the mid-1980s. Thank you, Jill and Doreen. I see a few heads nodding there. Uh, perhaps because he had a brother, Mervyn, who was affected severely by a debilitating disease and was a member of Anua for many years. Um, and I know that when Pastor Eric was here and wanted something done around the church, the school, Anua, or the cottages, the first person he would ring up would be Ray Ferdinand. And you had one man who was very insistent and one man who was very willing, and that meant that in both, most cases the job got done. Um, so. Yeah, Ray, uh, a member of this congregation um, and passed away during the week. He was 66 years old and he had cancer. I have here 12 copies of Ella Dote's funeral service. For those of you who could not make, make it out to Ella's uh, funeral service, if you wish to take a copy of the service plan, which I understand was planned out, thought out by Ella herself, then please, on your way out of church this morning, I'll be down the back there, take a copy from me. Number three, last year some people bravely volunteered to grow some rosella plants for me to uh, provide rosellas for Anua to make jam with. Well, that time of the year is coming around again. In a few weeks' time, I will have rosella seedlings. Barbara, I can see you thinking about it there. Rosella seedlings. So if you want to grab four or six plants off me, um, I will have them for you, and you can grow them on and pick rosella fruit and take it down to Anua so they can make jam out of it. And... I know Anua appreciates it, and I certainly appreciate it if you'll give us a hand in that area. And finally, the citrus fruit on your backyard trees is just about at an end. If you haven't eaten it already or, and you're not planning to eat it, how about picking a bucket full for Anua to make marmalade or jam out of? If you are not up to picking a bucket of fruit off the tree, give me a ring and I will come around and I promise I will only bring one bucket with me 
and uh, I will pick the oranges or lemons or grapefruit or mandarins or quamcorts or lemonade fruit or whatever it is that's on your backyard tree and I will take it down to Anua and they will make it into marmalade. Thank you very much. Okay. Um, yes, here. I've got um, Doreen has just given me a note here. So the street stall, which was on Thursday, I think last week, raised $890.55. So well done, everybody, for supporting that. Uh, that work goes towards important ministry. And, and thank you, Michael, for the, that work. It's really timely in this Sunday as we're talking about somebody um, that Jesus reached out to who, who had a disability to see ways to which we can support the work of our disability service here in Gatton. That's great, great to see. Okay, so the final thing is this morning, morning tea is going to be in the hall so that you can see these artworks. So if you normally stay for your coffee here, Instead, it's set up in the hall where you can go in and see these wonderful artworks by some of the school children uh, and some of our members. There are wonderful paintings of uh, landscapes, of um, sort of uh, floral works, uh, and some thought-provoking works in, in the church hall. So come over and join us. We'll open up one of the doors there and we'll go straight over there and have coffee over there and look at the artworks being celebrated and the theme free indeed. For the rest of you, God bless you as you go forward this week to love and to serve the Lord. Mm -hmm.